restricted in a one restricted I mean, format. Th that, that's what Ditto's for, right? You, you are you are very much vying to catch that restricted with the imposter ability. We'll have to see if that is going to be the case. It's going to be the Iron Jungleus and the Kyogre lead coming out, immediately threatening that tailwind in the face of this Chen Pao and Lunala coming from Giacomo. Yeah, we've got that Lunala coming out to the field. The Drizzle ability activating, bringing the rain. That Protoss, uh, the Quark Drive activating from that booster energy on the Iron Jungleus. And it is going to increase the speed on that Pokemon, making it the fastest thing on the field. It offers tailwind support as well, but it has to be very careful in front of that Lunala. It has access to that Meteor Beam. Its Shadow Shield is still intact, so it's not going to take as much damage this first turn before taking any damage, especially if the Iron Jugglist is tied up going for a Tailwind, but you can't leave that Kyogre unchecked with that Water Spout kind of sitting in the wings. And you can reduce the damage output of the Water Spout potentially with the Sucker Punch, but then you could always just switch in your Serena, get that Queen Majesty and block that move. But then if you do, and then there wasn't the Sucker Punch, then your Kyogre is still going to be slower than both Lunala and the Chen Pao because you didn't set the Tailwind and you'd have had to sacrifice your booster energy boost on the Iron Jugglist as well. So it's quite an interesting turn one here. Who's going to go on the offense and maybe the support as well? We do see the Protect on that Chen Pao here. Not wanting to contend with any of these attacks coming out turn one as a Snarl comes up potentially to break that Focus Slash on the Chen Pao and also that Shadow Shield on the Lunala as well as weakening those special attacks by one stage. The Icy Wind going to be fired back in return from that Lunala. Going to do a little bit of chip damage to both these Pokemon and Giuseppe side of the field and more importantly reduce the speed by one stage so getting rid of almost that Protoss uh, the quark drive boost on that iron jugulus and reducing the speed of that kyogre yeah but it was a water spout from the kyogre and it was only a tiny bit of icy wind chip so this is basically full power oh. but the lunala did it just enough chip damage to weaken the water spout and survive on three hp yeah that is a huge turn here for the kyogre like you say only taking a bit of chip damage that water power is almost at full power and doing a huge damage to the lunala after that snarl which chipped down and broke that shadow shield so importantly there so the Kyogre are in a great position now not really threatened by either that Chen Pao or the Lunala here in a good position to launch off maybe another water spout maybe just an origin punch if you're suspecting something like that sucker punch coming out this next turn the Iron Jugglers in a bit of more awkward position so it has to kind of react because it can take big super effective damage from the Iron Jugglers yeah it should, it should be slower than the Chen Pao now after that icy wind because Chen Pao is way naturally faster than the Iron Jugglers and the booster energy uh, speed boost has basically been cancelled out. Lunala here switching out into the Rillaboom, uh, so going to be able to threaten some good fake out pressure and some grass type damage into that Kyogre. Uh, it's going to be a terrestrialization here coming out from the Iron Jugglist into the Water type. Uh, maybe trying to keep itself safe from any of those ice crashes that could be coming out from the Chen Pao. Would have been super effective, now would no longer be. And there it is, there is the ice crash into the now Water type Iron Jugglist, shrugging it off very nicely indeed. And no flinch coming out here. There's the Tailwind getting that speed control. Uh, so now the Kyogre is going to be a bit more speedy. Wasn't attacked. Here's another basically full power water spout. Oh. Absolutely oh. enough to bring the Chen Pao down to its focus. That's a really nice chunk to the Rillaboom as well. Yeah, for a resisted Pokemon coming onto the field, it still takes a lot of damage. The Iron Jugulus, a really nice terrestrialization there, but also on the same side of things, the Giacomo switching in that Rillaboom threatens both now the terrestrialize into water type Iron Jugulus as well as that Kyogre. And now you can threaten with a fake out here, give your Chen Pao a little bit of room, but you're ignoring one of the options on uh, Giuseppe's side of the field and you kind of put yourself susceptible to getting knocked out with uh, leaving the other one alone. Yeah, but what about that Serena that could always be waiting in the back? That's the that mind game true. you always have to play. Like, sometimes you don't go for your priority attacks just because there could be a Serena and then you can play into that and not switch it in. But yeah, like you said, both both Pokemon on the opposing side are water type and now. The Trasolization has been used, so Kyogre can't go for any of its defensive type into the grass typing. So Grassy Glide would do massive damage. Woodhammer would do massive damage if you're trying to get around a potential Serena switch in as well. Yeah, we are going to see this turn play out. The Kyogre not one to entertain. Staying on the field in front of this Rillaboom as that there Serena does come onto the field. It will activate that Queenly Majesty ability and that Sucker Punch will fail because this Queen has stopped it. We are going to see a Hurricane in response from the Iron Jugulus into the Rillaboom and it is more than enough to pick up the knockout on this Pokemon. Giuseppe taking a huge lead in this first game. Yeah, very nicely done there for Giuseppe. If there had been the Sucker Punch, that would have probably been enough to pick up the knockout on that Iron Jugulus or do actually some significant damage to the opposing Kyogre. Ice Cool Crash wouldn't have done it into the Iron Jugulus anymore. We saw how much damage it took from the Ice Cool Crash thanks to that terrestrialization. And as well, it's now landed on the field because it's now a pure water type and lost its flying type. It's actually recovered a little bit back above half thanks to that grassy terrain 
thing that the Rillaboom set. And now the Lunala came back in. It's on 3 HP. Both Pokemon are in the red. They're going to be in range of any attack that Giuseppe would want to go for. The Tailwind's activate, activated. The Iron Jugglist is definitely still the fastest Pokemon on the field. I wouldn't be surprised if the Serena is built to be able to outspeed both the Lunala and the Chen Pao as well. We are seeing a protect from that Chen Pao, just prolonging its stay on the field, recovering a little bit as well as that protect from the Lunala. Just want to scout out, see what Giuseppe's Pokemon lock into. It is that Hurricane, and it will be fired into that Chen Pao, taking advantage of the Tailwind, not doing any damage this turn, and that Serena going for that triple Axel, which is into the Protect on the Lunala. So a bit of a dead turn here from uh, both players' sides. The big thing is the recovery that Giuseppe, probably more than Giacomo, is going to be able to take advantage of here. But still, same situation going into this next turn. The Tailwind's still active, you can see, for one more turn. So... Giacomo either has to let these two go down and rely on that Urshifu that's in the back to come in and try and clean up the four Pokemon on Giuseppe's side of the field or make some big plays yet. Really not, not looking good in this situation. No, it's not, and that's probably why he was going for a double protect, but it did end up failing there, trying to get the Chenpao out of that Tailwind, but no, the Hurricane is able to connect with the Chenpao, pick up the KO there very nice and easily. The Serena should be able to outspeed this Lunala in the last turn of Tailwind as well. It is going to be the Triple Axel with the shaky accuracy and does connect, but needs a second one as well and also connects with that second triple axel taking care of the lunala very nicely bringing giacomo down to his final pokemon uh, probably not going to be able to pull a 1v4 comeback here <laughs> no as good as that rapid strike Oshifu is the rain does stop the tailwind stops as well but you've got to think that the task is just going to be too much for this Urshifu to deal with. But what a job that Giuseppe's done as we do see that forfeit locked in. Locked in and Giuseppe taking game one off. Even more, even if you lose your Rillaboom in yeah. that case. Uh, so, yeah, but yeah, it seems like it's going to be a switch up here. And not with the Iron Jugglers and Kyogre, it's going to be the Urshifu and the Serena. And there it is. There's, there's, there's the Dragonite and Chen Pao, the combination that we haven't seen for quite a while now. Yeah, and, it, and normally you would say a very good combination to come out very offensive, coming out the gates and being able to do huge damage very quickly but in this situation you can see that Serena on Giuseppe's side of the field and it has got that Queenly Majesty it's going to prevent any of those extreme speeds from coming out uh, from that Dragonite no boost from that Sword at Swords of Justice from that Chen Pao so a really awkward position because that Urshifu is pressuring big damage into that Urshifu yeah, and you, well you need to terrestrialize at least into the water type to get that extra damage to KO Chen Pao through its focus slash there's no helping hand available on the Serena so committing your terror this early just to take care of the Champao might be necessary. And you've got the threat of the Triple Axel into the Dragonite, so depend on the speed training of both of these Pokemon, whether the Serena will be able to outspeed and get a Triple Axel off, but then at the same time, the Dragonite could just terrestrialize into its normal typing that it so loves to do. Yeah, that's very true, and I think if you do go for that terrestrialization, then it does take away the threat of that Triple Axel. Well, we are starting this turn with a terrestrialization, and it will be on to the Urshifu on Giuseppe's side of the field, going for that Water Terra type from the Urshifu, going to boost those Surging Strikes for the next few turns while it is sticking around on the field. Of course, you can't ignore the threat in that Dragonite as we see the surging strikes. The most important thing about that Trustalization though, Jamie, is it takes away that flying type weakness that the Dragonite has access to. Yeah, and the Serena here could be threatening a triple axel into the Dragonite as well. There was no Trustalization there. It was a good switch in for the, the Rapid Strike Urshfu, taking just under half there. The speed training on both of these Dragonite and Serena is going to be so important. And it's Serena that moves first, but the triple axel not going into the Dragonite here, catching the switch in of the Urshfu. And I only hit one time as well with that shaky accuracy on each of the checks. And there is the outrage, oh. but it's not enough. This Chenpao switched out and lost the Sword of Ruin boost to the Dragonite. And this arena was bulky enough to be able to take that Choice Banded Outrage. Yeah, that is a huge survival from Serena, showing how well it's been trained by Giuseppe, able to take one more attack. And now the nice switch in from Giacomo to kind of sulk up that Surging Strikes, but it doesn't really change the situation. That Dragonite is now going to be still threatened whether or not Giacomo goes for the Trustalization this turn to get around that Triple Axel knowing that that is one of the options that the Serena has, but not one to contend with it. Going to switch out, save it, and preserve it for later on in this game. Yeah, it would have been a range of U-turn from that Urshfu, or even just going for the Surging Strikes itself. It's, it was probably out of, well, I say it was probably out of range of the opposing at Rapid Strike Urshfu, but the Kyogre switched in, got the rain. It would have probably been in range of that Surging Strikes now, but it did U-turn before the Terrestrialized Urshfu was able to go for that Surging Strikes. Just a little bit of chip into the Kyogre, but of course, every bit of chip helps against that Water Spout. Rillaboom is going to be joining the field in the place that Urshfu still going to be a water resist, but now we're in the rain and also to Rastalize. So this Surging Strike, even into either resisted hit, should still be doing absolutely massive. And look at that. That's only the first hit of the Surging 
strike. This should bring the Rillaboom down below half HP. Wow, that's a huge turn here because another one of these surging strikes will be enough to take down a Rillaboom. Not often we see this as a fact. You can see that the Outrage is going to come out from the Dragonite. It will hit into that Kyogre and be enough to pick up a knockout. That is a huge pickup from the Dragonite. Just Giacomo taking a big lead here, taking down that really important restricted from Deceptive side of the field. Oh, and a really, really key bit there. That wasn't a confusion turn for, for the Dragonite. It's still going to go for the three-turn Outrage, but it's locked into Outrage. You can't even now terrestrialize because you're just going to Outrage, and what's the Rillaboom going to do? Now that the Serena's joined the field again, we just saw that the Rillaboom is two-hit KO'd by that Surging Strikes. Yeah. And well, I guess six-hit KO'd. It's always the debate that we have with amongst <laughs> casters. But let's go with a two-hit KO. And now it's a very straightforward, well, I'll KO your Rillaboom with Surging Strikes. Yes. You can't fake me out or Grassy Glide because Serena's just joined the field. We just saw that the Serena was able to outspeed the Dragonite on that first turn. And and is locked into his dragon and flying typing, so Triple Axel could be able to clean up there as well. We could just see a, a double KO on this turn. Yeah, it's going to be a real pin situation as we are going to see that surging strikes from Giuseppe's side of the field that will be into that Rillaboom, really annoying the damage that we saw the previous turn. It is going to be enough. Two surging strikes, and the third one will take down the Rillaboom, really not able to obtain any use out of those grass type attacks coming onto the field. Now we are going to see the Serena has it locked in with that Triple Axel. If it has, it's going to be hitting super effective into the dragon. Oh, it might One hit. Two hits. Is it going to get the three? It gets, it the, gets three the three and picks up a knockout. Here we go with the Serena doing good work here for Giuseppe and pinning in Giacomo into a really awkward position. Yeah, there, there was nothing that Giacomo could do there. That was good. Like, the Dragonite was pinned. If the tri all three Triple Axe was hit, it's a KO. They did, so it was. And you don't want to switch in anything on the rain-boosted, Terra Water-boosted Surging Strikes uh, from Giuseppe. Uh, we saw that, that without the rain boost, that did just under half to the opposing Urshfu. So that means that with the rain boost, the Surging Strikes from the Urshfu on Gi Giuseppe's side of the field can pick its KO. Whichever one it Surging Strikes will KO. But we did see that Giacomo's Urshfu moved first with that U-turn before the Surging Strikes. So maybe there's a chance for the Urshfu to be able to outspeed, but it seems like it was a speed tie here because Giuseppe's is moving first. Yeah, and it is going to be into that Chen Pao and two hits is all it's going to need to take down this Pokemon here for Giuseppe. The big thing you would notice from Giacomo's side, it has not brought that restricted this game, which is, you know, relying on the Dragonite rather than that Lunala. We are going to see the close combat pick up a token knockout with a critical hit yep. into Giuseppe's Urshifu, but the damage has been done here for Giuseppe as the Serena is left unchecked now. Going to be able to potentially fire off a power web into this Urshifu, not the best of accuracy, but you've got to imagine if it does connect, it will be enough to take it down, but oh, the big miss there coming out from the power web. Yeah, you, you got the critical hit you needed. If there's, if there's something like the Iron Jugulus waiting in the back, then it's probably going to be game over. Yeah, there it is. There's the Iron Jugulus. Uh, with the booster speed, it's going to be able to outspeed this Rapid Strike Urshifu. You obviously do train your Iron Jugulus to be able to outspeed that Pokemon uh, because it is way naturally faster as well. We're still in the rain. Hurricane is going to be 100% accurate here, so it will be just one Hurricane hit into the opposing Urshifu. Giacomo knows it. He's going to throw in the towel, and Giuseppe is going to win this round. What a 